Hello and welcome to the show today. My guest is a talented machinima maker behind the series Vader. Let's go to a clip now to see a piece of his work. Are you with us? Voice scared out of you? It happens. You'll find your voice again when you're ready. Joseph, I know there's a reason you're here. You have a gift. If I give you this, will you promise me you'll use it? All right. Now get in the front. It's not just marvelous, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, KP Sparks. Hello. How you doing? Thank you very, thank you very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Now, of course, first things first, as I always ask on this show. What got you into making machinima? Oh, okay, that's a good question. Uh, well, okay, I'll, I guess I'll start it out with uh, how I found machinima. I was just, uh, w one day, you know, I'm, I was a fan of Halo. Uh, I went to this Halo website, and people were talking about Red vs. Blue, and I'm like, huh, I'll check that out. So I went to the site, I'm like, holy shit, this is pretty cool. I mean, I've always been into filming and, you know, video making and stuff. I mean, ever since I was a kid, I mean, in 2001, I was watching Stargate SG-1, which is a badass show. It's a little cheesy looking back sometimes, but I, there, there are a lot of episodes in there that really got to me. And it was about a team. And, well, yeah, when it kept, and Red vs. Blue, it's just, it was so interesting. I mean, it had these people who are bobbing their heads, you know, to, to lines, but somehow they managed to make it really innovating. I mean, it was not like anything I've seen before. I was kind of a newbie to Machinima then. And eventually, well, I, I started thinking, what if I could do Machinima? And I just messed around in Halo 2, bobbing heads and split screen just to see how it would look. Messed with cinematography. And, well, then Halo 3 came out, which, well, uh, okay, let's just say Halo 2 Machinima was where it was at for me, because I saw Out of Mind, which, well, being a reputable miniseries, it's the best single thing out there. Or I saw a bunch of other Machinimas by, uh, I saw the Codex, which I thought was really interesting. I thought it was entertaining. And I saw, well, a bunch of other machinimas. And when Halo 3 machinima came out, it was like the golden age of machinima. You know, we got machinimas like Deus Ex Machina, Matchmaking, Pre-Game Lobby. Pretty much all of those are gone now, but, well, yeah. I was working on, I was working on a script then. It, was, it started out kind of small. Uh, and, well, then I checked out machinima.com, you know, see what they got. And I, sub I subscribed. And, and I just got... You know, a little more into the idea of actually doing a machinima, because you know I've always wanted to do something, anything, any, being the you know movie enthusiast I am. So, yeah, I just got through it. You know, Red vs. Blue, everything else. Yeah, you know, the usual. <laughs> now, of course, you use Halo Reach for your filmmaking. What's like for you, like the hardest part of making a machinima in Halo Reach? Is it like the writing for it, or is it actually the film? making part filming well it's being my first time and a lot of people have asked me if this is my first time and the answer is yes it's my first time uh everything okay okay so the the writing i've started writing theta at 2007 which well it started up it's completely different now from than it was then it was completely comedy back then then i got completely serious the, then it got kind of weird then it started getting mixed mixed up uh, and well, then when my co-writer came in, she she's writing a novel, so yeah, she's got experience. It's, and well, she told me, if she gave me advice, lots of advice, and she actually edited it, you know, slapped my wrist when I did something stupid. And she, she well, so she kind of guided me into the writing of the show, which is I found was the hardest part because I figured in machinimas, what what a lot of machinimas are really lacking is some character. I mean, sometimes I would watch a machine and I'm like, why do I care about any of these characters? I need to put some character in my show. So, yeah, she was kind of there to guide me through that. And I tried to create these nice, believable, and, you know, likable characters. Was, and that was, kind of, that was kind of difficult at first. Like, I'm trying to find the right way to do this character in the scene. You know, what I should do, where should I carry the plot, how to make it exciting. If there was a part where I'm just kind of overlooking it, she would come in, she would tell me, a, no, you need to pay more attention on this. And, well, well, the, when, once you got the writing down, the next big thing was, I guess, the voice actors. Because 
my voice kind of sucks, in case you haven't noticed. Uh, so, <laughs> does he know your voice is fine? No need to worry about it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, f- I figured since these people don't have faces, they need t- emotion to be channeled. I mean, I tried everything I could, you know, angles, you know, just just exactly get you know their, their point across. Uh, maybe put in some background here and there, just kind of show. See, but that's cinematography. That's not emotion. And I figure we need good voice actors. I mean, in order to channel these characters, like a uh, the the Invisible Man. And he would never have been so compelling if if it weren't for his voice actor, or, or his voice, As, and you know some animated features including. And so I went to I looked around to see if there was any voice actors around, and I checked out voiceactingalliance.com or .net, and also Voice Acting Club. They're two very close sites. And then I just started up an audition thread. You know I just I decided to make it look cool. I was afraid I was trying a little too hard, but. At first, no one really paid attention. Someone sent an audition. It was Spacey, who does Katrin in the show. Oh, and, well, yes, yeah, she auditioned for both Jean and Katrin, and she ended up getting Katrin. But then I started to get more and more and more. Or there, there are a lot of very talented people. I'm, well, I, got, I got a lot of people on board, but some people didn't make it in, and I'm hoping I can, you know, click, maybe get them, you know, to do a part in the future. Or, but... It kind of exploded after that. I was getting like five people a day, a, a, you know, sending in all these lines as from these characters. And I would actually, we'd actually send them critiques like, okay, we like your voice, but you need to be even more like this and that. And then they sent them again and we're like, great, welcome aboard. All right, so, but as for the filming, uh, I'm kind of a one man show. You see, I'm actually trying to, at each scene we see where multiple characters are walking, I've screwed up about 20 times because I'm one person with two hands. Is, and each controller needs about two hands, so, well, I'm kind of stuck there. there are, from time to time, I get someone to come in, maybe literally lift a finger to help me. <laughs> <laughs> it, which is amazing, because, well, yeah, how easy it is. As I'm hoping that maybe I can look more professional and, you know, have some characters move around and stuff, but sometimes it's just not an option. And so, well, the filming, to be completely honest, it comes to me naturally. I don't want to sound like I'm bragging or anything, but when it comes to a shot, I like to think, what what exactly am I trying to bring out here? Uh, I I never taken the class of lit of film. I'm 16, by the way. I'm in high school. I've never taken the lit of film class, but I would look at my sister's homework for a lit of film and think, you know, look at the pictures. I borrowed my creative writing teacher's cinematography book, and yeah, you know, I just kind of studied that and, and saw exactly how these things were filmed and watched a lot of movies and stuff, you know. So I got exposure to some a cool angle, some cool filming, and. So the cinematography wasn't that hard. Building the sets, it's, I really got a feel for the scene whenever I'm building a set. Like, well, I've, I did it ever since Halo 3. I was going to originally do Theta in Halo 3, by the way. I even filmed the first episode entirely in Halo 3. I'll get into that later, but, well, yeah, the sets, I, I actually look at the campaign and try to, you know, replicate that in some ways. Like, if two boxes are next to each other, one's falling down, I try to replicate that. I just try not to make it look too much like the original place. Like Forge World, let's face it, it's the most popular map ever in Machinima. You've seen it so many times, and I try to make it look interesting, you know, with lighting and everything. Mm. Now, of course, you just mentioned that you originally planned to do it in Halo 3 and now did it in Halo, now doing it in Halo Reach. Mm-hmm. Is that because, of course, Halo Reach is the latest thing which Machinima uses, or were things not working out in Halo 3? Um, actually, it's a whole, it's a, for a whole number of reasons. Uh, well, actually, to be completely honest, and I know a lot of my voice actors are listening, but it was for a slight excuse to keep on editing. Uh, well, you see, during the time Halo Three, I was making the Halo Three machinima, and there were a lot of elements that I felt were kind of missing because the characters they essentially looked the same since Halo Three had a little less armor, or armor permutations. So I, I felt maybe in Halo Reach, since with all these accessories and stuff, they could appear a, l- a little different in variety, you know, put more detail. There wasn't as much detail as I hoped. I hoped to put, like, bandages and flashlights on their heads and stuff. I didn't get that, though. But, well, and also, uh, I slightly regret moving to Halo Reach in some ways. This may be a shocker. But the fact is, I, originally, I wanted to do for Theta kind of a Western kind of theme, sort of. As cheesy as that sounds, I, I mean kind of a you know, with guitar riffs and, you know, more deserts and, you know, just get the raggedy edge feeling out there. You know, a lot like Firefly in some ways. 
when Halo Three had Sand Trap, it had High Ground, all, all these dusty, gross, you know, oh, bottom of the barrel kind of looking places. And well, at Halo Reach, it's more metallic in some areas. It's a little rainy. It's kind of damp. Reach is a jungle sort of. So and so the theme kind of so the theme kind of changed from westerny to kind of cybery in some ways. As and well, I, I'm kind of using that to my advantage now because you see. A, a Halo Reach, of course, you got Forge World, which is an obvious thing. You see, I mentioned people are using Forge World way too often sometimes. I mean, in Machinima, uh, if you type in Halo Reach Machinima, you'll see a Spartan of any color with Forge World right behind them in the thumbnails. And I'm just, and I thought, well, I kind of got myself in a corner there. But I'm actually using it to my advantage now. Like, for instance, although many of you may not have noticed it, it's kind of a, on my part here. At the end of phase three, part two, part one, it starts raining. You see, I'm trying to make it look different. You see, what matters to me most about Machinima is innovation. Make it, make it something no one's seen before. You see, it's really hard to do because you're looking at a video game, essentially, but I'd always try to do something different, which is what I'm trying to do. Like, for phase one, I, you know, try, mess, messed around with the giant laboratory in Forge World, which, you know, at the time felt a little kind of, at the time felt original, but, well... Eh, well, not, not not so much so. Oh, and well, I put I put in some campaign locations like the beginning where they're driving. That was in campaign, which well, a lot of people were wondering what map that was. And I know. Oh, so and I also use a lot of areas, you know, a lot of maps that weren't there. And for phase two, I decided to do, play with some coloring. I made it look dark and gloomy because phase two is a darkness, you know, sort of. See the first three episodes, phase one, phase two, phase three, which isn't finished yet. It kind of are supposed to bring out the three elements of the show. Phase one's kind of the lighter side of the show, you know, oh, these, these are the characters and their interaction. Phase two is going to show exactly how dark the show gets. And phase three is, well, let's just say it's the glory of the show, because phase three is the best thing I've ever written. I mean, I mean... Oh, cool. I'm sorry. You continue. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm good. Uh, well, anyways, for phase three, it's supposed to be the glory of the show. It's, it's the best thing I've ever written, and... I really, really want it to be epic. Uh, and not necessarily in explosions and Spartans running all over the place. Dark Null, I'm looking at you. Uh, just so, so, something something that's that really touches. As, and I've never really... There's never really been all that many... All much of that in the internet or machinima. I mean, the, I, I got really, really touched at the ending of Reconstruction. Nobody call me gay, please. Is, but I feel, I feel that in Halo Reach... It's people are gonna jump all over it when it comes to machinima because Halo Two, it, machinima is really hard to make in Halo Two. I mean, you have to get, a, get people over Xbox Live or System Link and have a camera with a giant black bars on top and bottom and all these crazy things that can happen. You know, no forge, less armor diversity. So you have to be really, really dedicated in order to make a good Halo Two machinima. But when Halo Three came out, it was so much easier. I mean, so much easier. So. On top of a lot of machinimators who've always wanted to make Halo 2 machinima, now they got their chance, and there's a big giant rush of good machinimas going out there. There is an equal and opposite rush of bad machinimas. You know, well, just someone running around, waving the camera, shooting people, and just clogging up every, all the search for you know good machinimas. And I, I knew immediately that was going to be the same way with Reach. So I, so what I'm trying to do here is create something innovative. I'm trying to make it new, as new as I can, as different as possible. I've already, I've already looked into what I'm going to do for the future of the series, and I've already got some great ideas how to make, you know, good, innovating environments. So there's some interesting elements that I'm going to put here and there, and th this also qualifies for all my future projects. I do not want to be repetitive. Hmm. Now, for me personally, I think Fate is a very well written series well done so what inspired you to what inspiration do you get when writing because I said it's a very very nicely written series with all the characters and stuff what inspired what inspiration do you get well at first there's, I've always wanted to make a team kind of related kind of show you know ever since I watched Stargate 2001 I play with Legos all the time and I got this cheap little kind of Lego camera uh, and I and I tried to make shows with it and stuff I'm talking way back my childhood. So what inspired me mostly was, you know, team-oriented, character-driven sort of things. The, later later on, you know, when I got older, you know, then I got into the Machinima story. 
I started watching other shows and everything, you know, see exactly what I'm trying to do here. Like, I started analyzing. I really did my research here. I watched both, you know, some Firefly, which was the be- seriously one of the best shows ever created. Even though it lasted only 14 episodes, it's still really close and dear. And, I'm, and I really, really love that show. And And that was, like, my primary inspiration. Like, this number one. And, I mean, all these characters are so, so original. The, the writing is really witty. It, it is, is in, in all honesty, one of the one of the best shows ever created. And, well, that was a big inspiration. I mean, well, yeah. And uh, uh, then I watched, started about getting to some lesser-known things. As, like I mentioned, I may have mentioned Pushing Daisies it, as one of my favorite shows before. Or... Or oddly, that was inspiring in, in some of the character interactions. And and also, I got to some more older stuff, you know. I decided to reach far and wide. Star Trek. Uh, every day, you know, when I got home, I'd watch an episode of Star Trek, just, you know, for some plot ideas, because Star Trek was kind of the genesis of pretty much half the science, fi- science fiction plots we see. Okay, so that was a big inspiration. And so, yeah, when I started Theta... I really had no idea where I was going to go with it, really, because is this going to be a comedy? I just don't. I just don't want to, you know, sit by and want to be a director. I want to do something, and so I started writing on my own. It was really, really, really cheesy, looking back, really, and later it started to evolve into everything started to change. And well, right now, I'm doing the show as not what I expected it to be. It's it's mostly it's driven by its characters, just as I wanted it, which is kind of odd because I never thought I never thought I could do it. It there's a lot of a lot of dialogue that I, there's a lot of moments in Theta that I really uh, like. It may sound like I'm high or oh, I'm the best writer ever. No, it's just I'm mostly proud of what I've done so far. I mean, a lot of people are like, "Oh, the show's gay," or "Oh, yeah, you guys could go fuck yourselves," okay? Because I don't care what you think. Because as I've pleased so many people, I've. Uh, I've pretty much went out there and I achieved my objective, uh, and I'm really proud of where it went. And so, and well, all my inspirations they're they're st- they're still up my sleeve, and I've st- I'm still watching shows. I'm st- I'm still well, dissecting a- anything I can just to see, you know, what make what makes this good. And, well, I mean, believe it or not, uh, I watch so I watch some shows like Dexter or or even dead like me and well uh, well yeah it's just it's all these okay now i'm kind of rambling blah, blah, blah. well yeah pretty pretty much all my pretty much i'm inspired by character driven things okay there's your answer now of course at the moment you are independent machinima maker and you're not part of machinima.com at any point would you like to Join with Machinima.com and put your work up on their channel. Uh, believe me, I've already tried. And to be honest, I it's, it's been a long time since I've sent them an email saying, "Hey, I've got this idea for a show here. Could I put it on your channel?" It's been a while since I sent that email, and even if they reply back, I do not want to join their site now. Because as all those all those of you who are fans of Machinima, I apologize, but I'm really not a fan of the site anymore. Because, well, okay, I'm going to refer to 2008 when. Deus Ex Machina, uh, matchmaking, all those machinimas came out. They were great. They they came out consistently. They they came out uh, really fresh. They were innovating, and but then this, then 2009, this there kind of came kind of a halt to all those. I mean, then they started bringing some gameplay videos with some boring ass buggers. I was just commenting on this stupid gameplay video or I've never I've I still cannot figure out what is so interesting about those I mean I'm I'm sitting there like okay when's a machinima gonna when's a Halo Reach Uncharted something machinima gonna put it come in my subscription box but no it's another fucking black ops commentary seriously it, I, I hate those As, and I just then they started releasing a lot of crap machinimas like I, I click on one it's just two guys talking and a piece of poop flies in their face, or something like that, and or or or, or there's just a, a, an elite staring at a rainbow, or, or a puppy, or something. I I cannot grasp what happened to Machinima after 2008. It, it, it's some some 2009. John, I, I can tell you half of the, half of the subscribers subscribe for John, and they're gonna keep their subscriptions until he stops making videos, because John's the only reason 
They, they've subscribed to a cinema. Half of them. It's just, I do not want to join the site now. It's rubbish. I'm sorry. It's rubbish. I mean, really. I, I mean, well, all the good machinimas have moved on. Pre-game lobby is... If I'm, if I'm wrong, I mean, if I'm right, they're breaking away from machinima. And uh, matchmaking, it, even though... Even though it's officially over, it was over way before then. Uh, to be completely honest, uh, a Deus Ex Machina speaks for itself. It never got finished. It's hard justice finished. It was interesting, and, and well, just all these machinimas seem to fade away. All the good ones. So, and even if, even if machinima.com pays me, like people supposedly say, I just do not want to join that site. And also, oh, speaking of payments, I'm working with voice actors, and well. I, re I really don't know what I would do with the money. You know, would I, would I have split it up? Uh, what, what would I do with it? So that's a whole can of worms I'm not sure I want to get into because, well, yeah, I just don't want to get into that. And actually, to be honest, th there are some sites that I'm actually getting some interest in. Like, I've actually been invited to this website. I'm not going to give too many details about it. That, but it's called Legion. And you may have seen it at the beginning of Phase 3 and the end, too. Oh, this is going to be hosted by Harabek, the creator of Freeing a Lobby. And basically, it's going to be like a, a website dedicated to filmmaking and stuff. Basically, just machinimas, uh, story-driven machinimas, not gameplay commentaries, and live-action stuff. Just generally just videos, as mostly. And it's just started up, so... And I'm, I guess I'm going to make contributions to that when the time comes. You see, all, all, the, all the videos there... They're kind of high definition, so actually, to spoil it, I'm thinking about creating some high definition versions of Phase One and Two. Don't panic; it's not going to be like Star Wars Special Edition. I'm not going to throw in a CGI job of the HUD. I'm not going to extend the space sequences. I'm not going to remove the strings even. And so, yeah, uh, I won't be independent forever, or but just not with Machinima.com. Now, what can we, the fans... I mean, as I said, Phase is a great series. It's in Phase 3 right now. So mm -hmm. how much more can we expect in the future? What can we, the fans, look forward to? Well, yeah. When it comes to Theta, of course, you can expect more episodes. See, Phase phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, they all came out in a, after a really long period, like two months, I think, or pop more. I mean, YouTube's calendar doesn't really work very well, probably three. Uh... You see, they're not coming out very consistently, and I'm trying to work on that. You see, I've actually been writing, ever since Phase 3, I've been writing the episodes shorter, so they're more bite-sized. It's not degrading the quality of the scripts or anything. It's more, more so maybe I can get them out every week, maybe, at the best. But that means I'll have to film them in advance and have the voice actors record in advance. It's, and I'm actually considering that. You know, you see, I've, I've already sent out Phase 4. There, there might be a Phase 4, you see... Some voice actors haven't gotten back to me, so that's that's a possible risk. I mean, maybe some of the voice actors would have to do something, and I might ha might have to find a replacement. They might come back in the middle. So, yeah, there's a lot of complications with that. But overall, for Theta, uh, I've actually, in the beginning, I planned a really long series. I mean, I've seriously written a, a, pl a plot outline for the entire season. Then eventually I wrote a plot outline for the entire series. You know, I've I've actually kind of showered a lot of foreshadowing and you know phase one two not to spoil it for some people I'm not sure how that's spoiling i think this should be obvious that they're foreshadowing uh i planned a plot line you see this is kind of epi act one act two act three for phase one i mean for episode one you see i think of phase one phase two and phase three all part of one big episode one tv length episode uh phase four through i think phase nine i mean we'll all be part of a second sort of episode but I've actually kind of ditched that idea. I'm just continuing until I meet the ending. And so to be to be honest, I'm trying I'm trying to get. I see. I'm starting to get more worried about its future. I'm trying to get faster and faster to the conclusion without uh, scratching off the plot or you know creating plot holes or yeah you know, never tying up subplots. I'm trying I'm trying to get to that ending, in the best way possible. Uh, I, I may have to dump out some stuff, and I'm very very sad about that, but. Well, to be honest, you can expect quite a lot. I mean, I've already started building sets for future episodes. I've already we're writing the future episodes, and well, for Theta, uh, as as of right now, 
uh, you can expect things in the future. But for for me, it, I'm actually planning a lot of other projects. I mean, well, right now, a friend of mine, I, we're we're collaborating on a project. It, it's a movie. It's a Halo Reach. Well, a Halo Three actually movie. You see, we decided to do in Halo Three instead of Halo Reach. It's that that's reaching fruition, and writing wise, as you see, well, yeah, it's a. Uh, kind of post-apocalyptic. I'm not going to reveal too much about the plot. I don't want to get people too excited because, well, you know, things happen. And I've actually been sharing some ideas with Michael Johnson, Harabek, creator of Free Game Lobby, some ideas for a uh, machinima that's... and the idea has really intrigued me. You see, there's this one thing I want to make. It's a, it's a machinima. I don't want to reveal too much. I mean, it... But what I have in mind for it is really exciting. I mean, I have so many ideas as for it. I mean, it's basically to to give you enough details. It's in the Halo uni- It's in the Halo universe. It's, it's going to be kind of a whole side story sort of thing. And but, well, well I'm, it's kind of like Theta and how it's character driven, but it's not how you expect. I mean, it's gonna the way it's filmed is gonna be so completely different. It's not gonna be what you've seen, you know, before. Which is what matters to me mostly. Okay, so and well, like like any other machine animator, I've thought about making a comedy series. That's probably not going to get off the. That's probably not going to get off the ground though, because well, well, I don't know. I just don't have enough ideas for it. I mean, if I got like one idea, you should. Uh, here's a advice to other machine animators: I have one idea, just don't create a show off just off of that. Just think about it, expand all that. And so well. That that's pre- that's pretty much for machinima. I want to get some live action stuff soon. Uh, I want I don't want to be repetitive. I don't want to create a bunch of war machinimas or action machinimas. I want to I want to get into some more casual things. As I don't uh, I don't want to be like Roland Emmerich and make a bunch of disaster movies every year. Or oh, have you seen the trailer for a new Roland Emmerich film? Oh yeah, it's another disaster movie. I just do not want to be like that. Uh, I don't want to be repetitive and I don't want to get people too excited too because I have a crazy well, stuff going on. And I mean, working for Theta is enough, enough on its own. I don't want to... Well, Theta will always be my top priority, no matter what. So if I, if I have to abandon some ideas in order to continue Theta, I will. Well, I can definitely say we'll all be looking forward to what, whatever you're making in the future. And, and sadly, that's all the time we have for. So thank you very much okay. for coming on the show. You have been a terrific guest. Okay. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen... KP Spark. And I've been Caboose15. Catch you next time.